Hey everybody, it's Kevin Deskins here with Midwest Photo, and we are kicking off an interview with Austin Kohler for our virtually cool Midwest Photo Feature Fair. Austin is a photographer here in Columbus, Ohio, but he is also our lighting specialist at Midwest Photo. How you doing, Austin? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so we're going to talk today, just have a conversation about what you do, uh, how you do it. And we're also going to cover some of the things that are on your wish list or maybe what you're thinking about getting other people. So let's just get right into it. I know you are a big food photographer and a product photographer. Um, everybody in the store knows it. I have to ask, because you're into food photography, what's your go-to place to dine? Like, what's your favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant is actually so far away and I haven't been to it in forever uh, it's called Pagoda Chinese Restaurant they're in North Pole Alaska where I'm from and they have some of the best Chinese food I have ever had in my life nowhere comes near it but <laughs> if I had to choose a place here locally I would choose Family Garden it's another Chinese restaurant if you couldn't tell Chinese is my favorite cool what's your what's your go-to dish uh, at your favorite restaurant in Alaska and your favorite restaurant here in Columbus uh, the favorite dish in Alaska is a um, asparagus chicken. Okay. I dig that. And favorite dish here would be uh, probably a pork fried rice. Okay. And have you, have you actually like shot at either one of those restaurants? Like have you photographed their food before? I have not. Not at these restaurants, no. Okay, cool. Um, you have photographed for other restaurants here in Columbus though, right? Yes. Cool. And so, so I under, better understand how you work as a photographer. Um, when you go to photograph food, what would you say is like the one thing that's in your bag that you wouldn't leave at home uh, for a shoot like that? I would definitely say my computer and a tether cable. That's extremely important for the work I do to be able to see the food and, and the image on a bigger screen while, while I'm working and styling it is super important. Cool. What Nobody kind wants of... to sit there and, and look at a little two or three inch screen and try to style food photography on that, you know? Tell me about it. I've tried that before. <laughs> what do you, uh, what do you tether? Like what application do you tether to? Uh, re recently it's been Lightroom, but I'm switching to Capture One, I believe. So okay. that's in progress. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. And uh, I assume tether tools, cables that you use, the reliable Correct. orange cable, or do you, do you go orange or you go black? Actually, mine's oh, going to show us. This is exciting. Mine is blue. Blue? Oh my goodness. I've never blue, seen a blue yeah. one before. This one actually might not be uh, tether tools now that I think about it. I don't remember okay. where I got this. I've had this one for forever, but it's reliable. It works. Nice. I have never seen a blue one before. That's really interesting. Um, important to note, though, that you can get orange ones at our shop, right? Uh, like the, the Tether Tools orange ones, which are high visibility, really nice. So you don't trip over them and everything. Yes. Yeah, that, um, that's what I would choose if I went with them for sure. Cool. Um, do you, so do you when you set up and you're shooting food and you're, you're tethering and everything um, and you set up your laptop, are you shooting on a tripod when you shoot food? Or are you shooting uh, like are you free handing it? Uh, no, I'm shooting. Well, actually, a little bit of both sometimes. Okay. Um, it depends on the image that I'm going for. Uh, a lot of the food photography is top down, so that I'll have up on a tripod because I'm, you know, not going to be that high up trying to shoot straight down. Um, but other shots where it's maybe out of 90 or not 90, but a, like a 40 degree angle, or you know, shooting across the table, I'll do that handheld. And I use flash the whole time. So I'm not too worried about blur or anything like that. Okay. Interesting. So you, you use flash. Do you ever use just like the, the window light? I've heard a lot of tips um, from folks who they'll specifically ask for if they're shooting food and they're not there on at an official capacity shooting food they're you know, they'll ask for a table by the window so that when they get their dish, they can shoot it. Do you ever shoot window light or do you strictly shoot flash? Um, I have shot window light, but I, prefer to shoot flash it's more controllable and you never know what the sun's going to do shining through that window when you get there so it's always nice to be able to have full control over that light yeah 
What's your, uh, so you shoot, um, I, I know you shoot with Godox quite a bit. Um, is your go-to like a Godox speed light or do you go with like a Godox 80 unit, like the 600 or a 200? Yeah, I use the 80 units. I do, I'll either use the 600 pro or an 80, 200 pro or a uh, regular version. Okay, cool. And then do you, uh, out of just sheer curiosity, are you, I know a lot of folks do the X1T. Some have switched over the X2T. Are you an X pro or an X user? Like an X1 I'm or X pro, X2 pro X2. all the way. Yeah. X pro. I have to have that big screen. Oh my gosh. I totally agree with you. I could not live without that giant screen. I don't, I, I, I get why people like that low profile of the X1T and the ability to like put an extra speed light on top of it. But that that big screen will for the X Pro, uh, the Godox X Pro trigger for uh, the 80 units and even the uh, the V and the TT units, I I wouldn't be able to live without it. Being able to control those that many flashes, um, how yeah. many? And for how many, example, go ahead. I I have a customer that uh, uses the X1 and prefers that because he does uh, images of birds in a blind, and so he's constantly kind of hunched down in this small space with his camera typically up to his eye and so he doesn't really have a lot of room to bring it down look at his settings go back up so he wants that right here uh, directly facing him versus for me i do more the advertising and portrait stuff so my camera is kind of all over the place and it's more comfortable for me with the work i do yeah that makes a lot of sense it, it totally makes a lot of sense um so how and this is just another sheer curiosity question here. What would you say is like, what's the highest power you'll use on a food shoot? Like, are you going 600 watt seconds? Are you, I know you said you use the 80 unit. So ha, do you ever really go above like the 200 watt second range? No, um, I actually don't pay that much attention when I'm shooting. I, I'm looking so much at my image that the power of the light doesn't necessarily mean anything to me. Um, but Thinking back at it, typically I'm at a quarter power or less most times, even yeah. with the 8200. Cool. Very cool. All right. Um, when you get, so, so you said, so you said that the, um, the one thing that's always in your bag for a shoot is your laptop because you tether to that. Um, what is one piece of, because a lot of people carry their bags uh, and they carry laptops in their bags. What would you say is like your go-to photo piece of gear that's always sure. in your bag? Yeah, another piece. Um, well, he's checking. I'm checking. <laughs> yeah. Probably uh, another important thing is my polarizing filter. I use that a lot um, with the food work and product work that I do. I've never heard of um, it. Th so this is this is interesting. I've never heard of somebody using a polarizing filter for food photography, what mm -hmm. do you see that it brings to your image? Because I, I, you know, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, I use a circular polarizer to get bluer skies, reduce reflections in windows or in water. Um, what are, what do you see uh, on your image that um, makes you want to use a circular polarizer? Um, sometimes with, for instance, if I'm shooting a bowl of soup and if the angle is just right, I typically am love lighting from the back forward a lot. So my light is coming directly at me and bouncing off of these objects, silverware, uh, soup, and, and sometimes if I take a tomato and I'll spritz it with water. And I mean, it's very minuscule, but you still notice that difference a little bit with some things when you turn that polarizer. So yeah, it's one less thing that you're going to have to edit later, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else I can do to, to get it right in camera and not have to worry about it at home is what I want to do. I feel that uh, when you get hired to do uh, to photograph a product or a menu or a special dish, um, what would you say, how, how do you go about setting that up? Like, do you visualize it first? Do you, um, do you kind of make a plan? Do you talk with the chef? Like what's what, tell me more about your process and how you, that works for you. Sure. Um, a lot of the work that I do is working to a brief. So the company will tell me what they're looking for in the style and, and they want things to be consistent and match what they, the, the look that they're going for. So um, I, when I get to the restaurant, I have this brief in mind and I'll make sure to have a conversation with the chef and 
tell him, you know, anything specific that I need to make that happen. Uh, holding sauces off on the side until the last minute, um, styling a little bit when they're making it. Of course, I'll style it more when I get the dish myself, but the more they can style it, the less moving around on the plate we're doing. And um, th that's just dependent on the image I'm doing. If it's like top down, that has to be styled a little differently. Or if it's, for instance, a sandwich, you can't really photograph that top down because you're just going to see bread. Right. So then we'll, you know, pull the camera down and shoot that at like a 60. And I'll kind of layer the sandwich just right so that you can see all the ingredients in it. Sometimes when they'll bring that dish out, the tomatoes are shoved to the back or the pickles are underneath and you can't see everything. So for our customers, we want them to know exactly what they're getting in that dish. And it's more appetizing to look at too. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I laughed a little bit when you said just photographing a sandwich top down. <laughs> Uh, I I just found that funny for some reason. Um, so <laughs> when you well. so you're working as your own stylist. Um, have you and and just for those at home who may not be familiar, when you're photographing food, sometimes on a commercial basis, if you're working with a larger corporation, they may bring in a stylist, and that stylist is uh, responsible for kind of working with you and maybe even an art director and then the chef to kind of bring things together and be that glue. But it sounds like you're essentially working as your own stylist during many of these shoots because you're working in small mom and pop restaurants, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, have you ever worked with a stylist before? I haven't. Nope. I have not had to work with a stylist. Um, Tell me how you came to um, style food on your own um, having, I assume you haven't worked as a food stylist before and you, you haven't worked with a food stylist in the past. How do you, um, do you find inspiration from, from other food photography? Do you look at other menus? How do you go about determining the styling for, let's just say it's, um, um, some, some bruschetta and a soup. Like what, how would you go about doing something like that? Um, yeah, I do get a lot of inspiration from photographers that I follow. Carl Taylor is a big inspiration for me. Um, and I have followed a lot of his training courses and stuff to, you know, to learn how to style food and photograph products and all of that. So he's a big inspiration. Um, another one is uh, Jonathan Knowles. He's more of a still life, but he still does some other styling in a way. And I'll follow, you know, it, it's all pretty much the same with all of them and how they style you're just trying to show the product in the best light and um and what's the word i'm looking for place your image basically you know like the where the spoons are going to go around the edge to, to bring your eye into the photo and um create those leading lines there we go that's the word i was looking for leading lines so that that's just what I'm looking for mainly in, in my styling is where I'm bringing the eye into focus in my image nice. and those other little props, nice. like, like silverware and, and, uh, tomatoes and all those, um, accent pieces just help with that nice. placing them around the edge and bringing your eye into the middle. So you're using a lot of the same compositional techniques that a regular photographer would use. You're just applying them to food really. Right. Yep. Nice. That's pretty cool. Um, when, what would you say? Um, so we talk a lot, a lot about food here. Um, um, whether it be products or food, cause I know you do some, some product photography too. You did a really cool feature, uh, on our YouTube page where you shot some, um, uh, Bombay Sapphire gin, which is kind of a mixture, uh, between both food and photography because it's the bottle, the artistic, uh, the, the, the bottle itself is a piece of art, I'll say. And you did a great job photographing that bottle of gin. So you both, you, you shoot both food and products. What would you say is like a dream campaign? Like imagine a company coming to you and they say, Hey, Austin, we want you to shoot this. What in your head is that company? And what's the, what's the thing you're shooting? Um, I would probably, probably say I mean I don't know if there's going to be a specific company that I really want to work with but I want to work with a bigger name something like Nike or Givenchy or something that is really out there that's going to see a 
lot of eyes and, and get a lot of traffic to my work. So something along those lines. And if I had to choose one specifically, I'd probably go with Nike because I, I do want to do some neat athletic still life stuff. I, uh, hey, Nike, if you're listening, Austin's a really good photographer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really my cool. Way. I, I've seen a lot of folks shoot uh, shoes and clothing, and I know they get a lot of joy out of it. And I can see you just nailing a Nike campaign. That would be awesome, man. Um, as as I know, and as many others know, you also shoot portraits, which could really play into a really cool um, commercial campaign that you could shoot. Um, when it comes to portraits though, what would be like your go-to if, if you had a, if you're mentoring a young yeah. photographer and uh, they want to know what's like a great go-to um, lens that is not going to break the bank, really not destroy their budget and getting started out. What would you recommend to them as like a good starter lens? I know it sounds cliche, but definitely a nifty 50. <laughs> Those are a great portrait lens because of the focal length and you know typically the aperture that comes with them but but not only that it's the fact that you're now the zoom you are now creating the composition you're not just you know twisting a lens and creating a different picture you're moving around and finding entirely different compositions and angles and I know for me when I moved to a prime lens that changed the game for my composition it just expanded my creativity and yeah made a huge difference so that would be the one that i would recommend now we um we just had a food class with the midwest photo online learning studio and we also offer free 30 minute one-on-ones for food photography in our store um i know that you shoot a lot of food you shoot a lot of products do you have any zooms or do you strictly shoot primes at this point don't laugh but the only lens that i even own is a nifty 50 really Wow. Yeah. So what do you, um, what's like your go-to, uh, cause you probably rent lenses too, right? Yes. What's, yep. what's your like go-to rental lens? Like what's the one thing that you regularly take out? Uh, 24 to 70 when okay. I do my, my commercial work and even some portrait stuff. If I want something wider, I'll go for the 24 to 70. Cool. Yeah, I know, I know just based, like I said, we, we just had a, a food class at the on the learning studio online and um, he really recommended just two lenses. I mean, he really liked his 100 macro. Uh, this was Peter Lee with uh, Canon and he said he really likes his 100 macro. He regularly uses a 50 and the 24 to 7 really is the only other lens he uses for food photography and he's an incredible food photographer. So um, I can I can see that. Do you do you ever use a 24 to 74 products or photos or is it strictly the 50? Um, I, I do use the 24 to 70 for product and, and portraits too. Cool. Now, um, I know that, uh, you have been photographed before yourself. Um, and I know our talented Fuji film specialist Taylor has photographed you. Um, and I know you've got a partner now. Does, does Harvey, does, does your partner Harvey, does he ever pick up the camera and photograph you at all? I have had him hold the camera before. Um, I just had him hold it off to the side while I was getting something else set up. Um, he's a great, great assistant, by the way. And he just, you know, after holding it maybe two or three times, he got a little, a little antsy and wanted to push the buttons. So I let him take a picture of me. <laughs> nice. And does, does he... Um, does he show any interest in photography? If you had to get him a camera, like what would be your go-to camera for him? Uh, I actually did buy him a camera. He he has shown more interest in it since he's met me. And I bought him a Fujifilm, uh, goodness, it's the Instax Mini 70, I believe. Nice. Spoiled. Yeah. You spoiled him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, you know, as photographers, we often get gifts ourselves. Uh, I have seen a number of gifts over the years uh, that haven't been great. Uh, I know they're all given to me with great intentions, like, you know, at, at least every other year I'm seeing a lens mug. But um, if you're thinking back to a photographer friend of yours or an assistant that has done a great job, 
what do you think would be like a good stocking stuffer for them or a thank you gift for the year that you would get them that's photo related? Yeah, um, I have one right here, actually. This, this is uh, called Pulse by Alpine Labs. And this was a gift to me from my mom about five, six years ago for Christmas. And I love it. It basically is a all-in-one self-timer, intervalometer, um, and shutter release that sits on your hot shoe of the camera and plugs in through the sync cable. And it's Bluetooth enabled. So you connect it to your phone and you can go around and con control it. You can control your camera with your phone, change the settings, do long exposure, uh, HDR, basically anything. And then you can also see the image on your phone once it's done. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's um, pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah, what would you say is, you know, you know and as photographers ourselves, our gear is very expensive and our, um, our wish lists are kind of complicated and some people don't always understand them or understand what we really want. What's on your wish list this year? If you could say, you know, Santa, bring me one thing, uh, under the tree that is photo related. What's your, what would you say is your, your thing under the tree or even in your stocking that you would, that's on your wish list? Hmm. I really need a new lens, but I feel like that's a lot to ask for. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they're, they're sometimes they're expensive and sometimes they're, what, yeah. what would be, um, what would be something that would be helpful for you in your photography, uh, that would be something that somebody could get you? Um, a bigger camera bag. Cool. Yeah. Are you, uh, is no. you, do you have your eye on anyone in particular? I don't, I haven't been looking, so I don't have an idea yet. I'm, if I had to put feelers out for what kind of bag, I'd say maybe a backpack style. Backpack. I miss having a backpack style because right now, right now I'm actually just using basically a, a tote case with a little strap. And that's what I keep my camera and my backup in. So something that I could probably strap to my back and have my other hands and shoulders free for other gear would be nice. Makes a lot of sense. And your, just so I, uh, just so I know your setup and everybody else knows your setup, what is your primary body and what's your backup body or are they the same? Uh, I'm actually, my primary body is a Canon 5DSR and the backup, sadly, I actually didn't even remember. It's a 50D. Okay. It's an old one, but trust, trust still works, 50D. So. Yep. It does. All right. All right. Well, Austin, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you uh, talking with us for the virtually cool Midwest photo feature fair. Hopefully folks have learned something uh, about food photography or product photography. Um, awesome information in here. We're going to send out an email with some of the things that Austin mentioned today. So keep an eye out on your email and as always visit us at mpex.com. Thanks, Austin. Thanks so much.